I'm Taryn Covington. I am 22 years old. Currently an area manager here in Charlotte. I'm also a part of SESO, which is an organization that works with foster youth, providing support and help whenever needed. SESO stands for Strong Able Youth Speaking Out. Me and my siblings originally came to foster care together. Um, and I kind of was, I had a kind of a bad attitude or, you know, very protective of my siblings. Um, and they kind of took that as, you know, just, um, yeah, like having a bad attitude, being, you know, a rowdy kid or being an upset teenager. When actuality, it was just, I was actually used to being my sibling's mother and being the person that parented them, that got them ready for school, and, you know, that had made sure they got on the bus, cooked dinner and stuff. I was just used to that. So having a foster parent or a group home parent come and, you know, kind of like take that role from me, it was a balance of transitioning into being an actual child, actually being able to go outside and play, you know, just watch movies and not actually have to worry about, oh, what my sibling's going to eat in two hours. When I was younger, like, I didn't tell a lot of people that were in foster care just because of, like, when you say you're a foster kid, they kind of, they kind of look at you a little differently because they always think it's your fault or what you did or, oh, what, what did you do to get put in foster care? It's like, oh, I didn't really do nothing, you know what I'm saying? It's just the circumstance that I was born into. Yeah, it just had to change in order for me to grow, in order for me to become the person I am. A big bias that resource parents make, um, nine times out of ten, they're either three, three things, abuse, um, drugs, or just an inadequate home. And that may not always be the case. It could be a mo many of dis different reasons why a child is in the care or with someone else other than the biological family. And even if you do know a little bit, you don't know the full story. So you can never um, assume or you can never be like, oh, you're going to be like your mother, you're going to be like this, because you, you never know that. Having other people have biases against me during my living in foster care and during uh, my coming of age kind of like put a damper on me for a little bit when you're a foster youth and then Especially the people that they either are very new foster parents or foster parents that had a previous kid that needed a little more attention. And then when you get a new person and it's kind of like, um, I'm totally different than them. I'm not from where they're from or I might not need what they need. It's kind of hard sometimes for foster parents to actually zoom in on that one kid and what they need and not have biases because of the previous one or from other foster parents, whatever they told you or anything like that. Or even like my case file may not have been as pretty as you know as you would like to see, but you have to actually get to know me and not where I came from or where my parents is, you know, what my family did. Just because my family's like that, that's not necessarily mean I'm gonna be like that. I wish resource parents knew that each and every kid is different. You can have a sibling group or three, all those all three of them had different experiences, different mindset, different ways of thinking. You have to actually talk to the actual youth and actually get how they, how you know, get how their mind breaks and get how their brain breaks and how they feel about certain situations. A real world impact of resource prayer and being able to, you know, identify and manage the different biases that they may have with their kid or with, you know, just in general of their foster youth. I feel like both the youth and the adult would be able to build a stronger bond.